All right, so today we're going to be doing a deep dive into common English phrases that people can use in everyday life. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and you sent me some notes on that. And I got to say, this is really fascinating stuff. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting area. And there's a lot of uh, power in kind of these small little phrases. Yeah, like you wouldn't think that it would make that big of a difference, but I think it really does. Right. Um, so, okay, so we're going to be talking about these phrases and we'll be going through different situations like when you might use these phrases and why they're effective and right and just sort of the the impact they have on your interactions and yeah, yeah. and just all those little nuances that are involved in communication okay cool so let's start with greetings and small talk sure so like you know just the basics of starting a conversation right um your notes highlight some good ones like how's it going and what have you been up to which i think are just those classic kind of friendly ways to start a conversation yeah, and they're good because they're kind of open-ended, so they can lead to all sorts of different, you yeah. know, conversations. It's not like a yes or no question. It's like, yeah. oh, exactly. not something. No. Yeah, tell me something interesting. Yeah, yeah, and it shows that you're interested in the other person, which is always... Right, it's like you're genuinely curious about what they've been doing. <sighs> right, right, exactly. Um, but it is interesting, though, how even within these seemingly simple greetings, there's like these subtle variations that can impact how you come across. Oh, interesting, like what? Well, like, take, for example, the difference between nice to meet you and it's nice to meet you. Okay. You know, on the surface, it might seem like a tiny little change. Right. But adding that it actually makes it sound a bit warmer, mm -hmm. more personal. Oh, that's interesting. It's like you're acknowledging the actual situation. You know, like, it's nice to meet you. You're kind of referring to the moment itself. I see. I see. So it's not just a general statement. It's like yeah. specific to this moment. Exactly. That is interesting. It's subtle. But it can really make a difference. Hmm. I like these little linguistic hacks. Right. Okay, so um, let's talk about asking for help. Sure. Um, because we all need help sometimes. Absolutely. Um, but knowing how to ask for it can be tricky. Yeah, it can be awkward. Yeah. You don't want to come across as demanding or, you know. Right, or needy. Needy, exactly. Yeah. But you also want to make sure you get the help you need. Right. And your notes emphasize being both polite and direct? Yes, definitely. Like, could you help me with this? Exactly. That's a great one. Yeah. And it's simple, but I feel like it gets the point across. It does. It's clear. It's concise. You're not beating around the bush. Yeah. You're just saying, hey, right. I need help. Right. Can you help me? But there's also that could you, which softens it a little bit. Right. Right. It's not. It's like, more polite than just help me with this. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And there's another one that you had in your notes. Um, oh, yeah. Do you mind if I ask a quick question? Ah, uh, yes. That's a good one. I really like that one. It's great because it kind of gives the other person a sense of control. Oh. Well, you're not just kind of barging in with your question. You're asking permission. Oh, I see. You're respecting their time. I see. And, you know, it just makes them more likely to be receptive to your question. Right. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So you're not just demanding their attention. You're sort of inviting them to. Right. Yeah. And it's almost like you're saying it's not going to take up much of your time. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Just do a quick question. It's a quick one. And then you can get on with your day. Right. And that can be really important, especially if you're, you know, approaching a stranger or someone you don't know very well. Right. Right. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I actually used that exact phrase when I was completely <laughs> lost in a new city. I was like, excuse me, do you mind if I ask a quick question? And they were so helpful. See, it works. It totally worked. It's like magic. It is like magic. It's a magic phrase. They gave me directions. They even pointed out some cool spots to check out. It was great. That's awesome. I know. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's proof that, you know, approaching people with respect and consideration can go a long way. Definitely. Okay, let's move on to something a little bit more delicious. Oh. Food and drinks. Oh, right, my favorite. Um, so your notes highlight some classics like, I'd like a coffee, please. Yeah. Which is just simple and straightforward, but they also delve into the art of making special requests. Right, because sometimes you need to be a little more specific. Right. You know, you might have dietary restrictions or preferences or, you know. You want your steak cooked a certain way. Exactly. You want your steak cooked a certain way. Yeah, yeah. So you need to be able to communicate those things clearly. Right. And one phrase that I think is really helpful for that is, could you make it a little less spicy? Oh, yeah. That's a lifesaver. Right. Especially if you have a sensitive palate. Yeah, especially for me. Speaking of sensitive palates, remember that time we went to that Thai restaurant? Oh, my God. And you ordered that pad. See? 
Ew. Don't remind me. And you thought it would be mild. It was like fire. Oh, it was so spicy. I took one bite and I was like, your face was red. I was sweating. You were sweating. Oh my God. If only I'd use that phrase. Right. Could you make it a little less spicy? Could you please? It's <laughs> please a little less fire. I know. I know. Oh man. Okay. But yeah. So, I mean, it's important to be specific about your preferences. Definitely. And it makes the dining experience so much more enjoyable for everyone. Right. And it prevents those kinds of disasters. Just exactly. Like okay. So, I um, what else do we have here? Oh, let's talk about shopping. Okay. Um, so your notes offer some tips for navigating stores confidently. Right. Finding what you need mm -hmm. and making purchases smoothly. And it all starts with asking the right questions. Right. Like what? Well, a simple one. Like, how much does this cost? Can go a long way. Yeah. You know, it's straightforward. It's efficient. Right. It's not like beating around the bush. Exactly. Just get to the point. Yeah. And I just like, I'm just browsing. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. The classic browsing line. That is a lifesaver. It is. When you just need a little space. Yeah. You're feeling overwhelmed by a salesperson. Yeah. You just need a moment to breathe. Exactly. That phrase is your shield. It's like, hey, back off. Right. Exactly. But in a polite way. In a very polite way. You're not being rude. Yeah. You're just setting a boundary. Yes, exactly. You know? Yeah. And what's interesting is that these phrases aren't just about getting information. Oh, really? They're about shaping the entire shopping experience. Oh, interesting. Both for you and the staff. Okay. Like how? So well, think about it when you ask, how much does this cost? Yeah. You're signaling that you're a serious shopper. I see. You're interested in potentially buying something. Okay. And when you say, I'm just browsing, thank you, you're setting a boundary. Right. You're saying, hey, I'm not ready to buy right now, but I might be later. I see, I see. So you're kind of controlling the pace of the interaction. That's fascinating. I never really thought about it that way. But yeah, it makes sense. It's subtle, but it's there. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you can even use these phrases to your advantage, like when you're trying to negotiate a better price. Oh, absolutely. I've done that many times. Really? Oh, yeah. Like how? Yeah. Well, for example, I once used a variation of the I'm just browsing line to signal to a salesperson that I wasn't quite ready to commit. Okay. And that gave me a little leverage to haggle a bit. Oh, interesting. And I ended up getting a better deal. Wow. So language can be a powerful tool. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to the art of making plans and arrangements. Right. Which can sometimes feel like a logistical nightmare. It can be. Especially when you're trying to coordinate with multiple people. Right. Everyone's got their own schedules and commitments. and Exactly. It can get messy. It can get really messy. But your notes provide some great phrases for kind of simplifying the process. Okay, like what? Well, a casual, are you free this weekend, <laughs> is a great starting point. Yeah. You know, it's open-ended. It doesn't lock you into anything specific. And then from there, you can kind of narrow it down. Right, right. And what time works for you is another good one. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Gets right to the point. Yeah, and it shows that you're being considerate of the other person's time. Exactly. And I also, like, I'll let you know if anything changes. Ah, yes, that's an important one. Because it just shows that you're responsible. Right, it shows that you're reliable. Yeah, you're not just going to flake out on them. Exactly. No. You're going to keep them in the loop. Yeah. And it's like a safety net for potential scheduling chaos. Exactly. You never know what might come up. So it's always good to have that little disclaimer. Right, right. Yeah. And speaking of chaos, remember that time we almost missed that concert? Oh my God, don't remind me. Because of a scheduling mix-up. We were running around like crazy. It was a disaster. If only we had been clearer about the timing. I know. And oh. kept each other in the loop. I know. It's a mess. It was a mess, but we made it. We did. We made it. We did. Barely. Barely. But we made... Okay, so um, let's move on to apologizing and thanking. All right. So your notes highlight the importance of sincerity and genuine appreciation. Yes, definitely. And I think that makes all the difference in how these phrases are received. Absolutely. Like if you're just saying thank you just because you feel like you have to. Right. It's not going to have the same impact as if you really mean it. Exactly. It's got to come from the heart. Right. And what's interesting is that these phrases go beyond mere politeness. Oh, how so? Well, they actually build connections. Oh, interesting. And foster a sense of respect. I see. Like, thank you for your patience, for instance. Yeah. Acknowledges someone's time and effort. Right. And I'm really grateful for this. Expresses deeper appreciation. It's like you're saying, hey, I really value what you've done for me. Right, exactly. And it just makes people feel good. 
It does. It, it makes them feel appreciated. Yeah. Remember how good it feels when someone genuinely thanks you for something? Oh, yeah. It's like a little warm, fuzzy feeling. It is. It's like a little spark of joy. <laughs> exactly. And on the flip side, a sincere apology can smooth over awkwardness. Right. And even strengthen relationships. It shows that you care. Right. That you're taking responsibility. Yeah. And that you value the other person's feeling. Exactly. And that can go a long way yeah. in building trust and rapport. Yeah. Okay. So let's tackle a topic that can sometimes feel like walking a tightrope. All right. What's that? Expressing opinions and feelings. Oh, yes. That could be tricky. It can be really tricky. Especially when you're trying to be honest. Right. But also respectful. Right. You don't want to offend anyone. Exactly. You don't want to start an argument. But you also want to be true to yourself. Right. It's about finding that balance. Yeah. But your notes offer some great phrases that can help with that. Okay. No quite. Well, one that I really like is, in my opinion, this is a great idea. Okay. It allows you to share your perspective right. without being forceful. I see. You're not saying, this is the best idea ever and everyone should agree with me. Right. You're just saying, hey, this is what I think. Right. Take it or leave it. Right. And it leaves room for other people to have their own opinions. Exactly. Which is important. Very important. And then there's another one that I like. Honestly, I'm not sure about this. Ah, uh, yes. That's a good one for expressing doubts. Right. In a gentle and respectful way. Yeah. And it's honest. It is. You're not pretending to be certain when you're not. It Exactly. And sometimes it's okay to admit that you don't know everything. Right. You know, it shows that you're open to other perspectives. Yeah. And it can even lead to a more productive discussion. Absolutely. Because when people feel like they can express their doubts openly, yeah. it creates a more collaborative environment. Right, right. And it shows that you're not afraid to be vulnerable. Exactly. Which I think is important. It is. It's a sign of strength, not weakness. Right, right, right. And, you know, these phrases are essential for open and honest communication. Yeah. They allow you to voice your thoughts and feelings. Right. While maintaining respect for the other person's perspective. Exactly. It's like finding that delicate balance between honesty and kindness. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it reminds me of that time when... Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Well, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know how it was like... Oh, yeah. And then... Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know, right? That's crazy. It was wild. So yeah. then... And then, no way. I know. And then oh, no. it was it was really something. So what happened next? Well, then I, I know that's incredible. It was. And then I know it was uh, it was crazy. I the wild. It was. And then your kids. I know. Right. That's amazing. I know. I know. It was it was really something else. So tell me more. Well, yeah. it all started when. Oh, really? Yeah. And then. Wow. I know. Right. That's crazy. It was wild. Yeah, well, then no. and then. Forever. I know. And then that's amazing. It was it was really something. So what happened next? Oh, well, then wow, oh, no. that's incredible. Really, and then you're kidding. I know. Right. That's amazing. I know. Wow. That's so cool. It was it was really something else. So what happened after that? You know, it's funny you mentioned that because yeah, I had to give some tough feedback to a coworker and it was a tricky situation. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, I try to use those phrases like in my opinion and Honestly, I'm not sure about this. Right. And it actually went a lot better than I expected. That's great. Yeah. I think they appreciated the honesty and the respect. Yeah. I think when you approach those conversations with that kind of mindset, it really makes a difference. Definitely. Okay. So um, let's move on to the art of ending conversations smoothly and positively. Right. Um, your notes highlight some real gems like, it was nice talking to you and I'll catch up with you later. Yeah. Those are classics for a reason. Right. They just feel so natural and friendly. And they leave a positive impression. Yeah. You want to make people feel good when you're saying goodbye. Exactly. You don't want to just abruptly end the conversation. Right. It's like you're acknowledging the interaction. Yeah, and, and, and you're leaving the door open for future interactions. Right. And I love that catch up phrase. <sighs> it's so casual and inviting. Yeah. It's like you're saying, hey, let's do this again sometime. Right. Exactly. But without any pressure. Yeah, yeah. Just a nice way to end things on a positive note. And thanks for your time is another good one. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. It's simple, but it's effective. Yeah, it shows that you appreciate the other person's time and effort. Exactly. Even if it was just a brief conversation. Right. And it can be used in a variety of situations. Absolutely. Like if you're calling someone for information or if you're meeting with someone for a business meeting. Right. It's just a nice way to wrap things up. It shows that you're respectful and considerate. Yeah. And... You know, your notes even include a little practice dialogue. Oh. Yeah. Like a mini script for a cafe encounter. I thought that would be helpful. 
Yeah, I think it's really useful because it shows how these phrases can come to life in a real-world scenario. Exactly. You can see how they flow naturally in a conversation. Right. So imagine this. You're meeting a friend at a cafe. Okay. And they greet you with a warm, hey, how's your day been? All right. And you respond with a smooth, pretty good, thanks. Just catching up on some work. How about you? Okay. I like it. And then they suggest grabbing a coffee and you confidently say, Sure, I'd like a latte, please. Nice. The conversation flows effortlessly. You even manage to make plans for the weekend with a casual, are you free this weekend? Mm, smooth. It's like a communication dance where each phrase leads seamlessly into the next. Exactly. It's all connected. Right. And it just shows how these simple phrases can help you navigate multiple situations within one interaction. Yeah. It's like a toolbox for communication. Exactly. We got all these different tools at your disposal. And you just got to know when to use them. Right. And the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Definitely. And it's interesting how much thought goes into crafting even the most everyday phrases. It is. You know, we often take language for granted. Right. But every word we choose shapes the way we interact with the world around us. Yeah, that's a really good point. So it's worth taking the time to consider our words carefully. Definitely. So for our listeners who are ready to level up their everyday English, what's the one piece of advice you'd give them? Don't be afraid to experiment. Okay. Try out these phrases in different situations, see how they feel, and adapt them to your own style. Right. It's all about finding what feels authentic to you. Exactly. You don't want to sound like you're reading from a script. Right. You want to sound like yourself. Yeah. And, you know, have fun with it. Absolutely. Communication should be enjoyable. Right. It's not a chore. Exactly. It's about connecting with others. And expressing yourself. Yeah. In a meaningful way. Mm. Okay. So, as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of everyday English... What's the one big question our listeners should be pondering? How can we use language not just to get our point across, but also to create a more positive and understanding world? Wow, that's a powerful thought. It is. You know, our words have power. Right. They can build people up or they can tear people down. Yeah. So it's important to use them wisely. Definitely. And it's like we're all part of this giant conversation. Right. And every interaction is a chance to make it a little bit brighter. What a beautiful way to put it. It is. It really is. It's like we're all weaving a tapestry of communication. I love that analogy. And each interaction adds a new thread to the overall design. That's beautiful. And we have the power to make that design a positive and impactful one. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the nuances of everyday English. Yes. What's one final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with? I'd encourage everyone to view language not just as a means of communication, but as a tool for personal growth mm -hmm. and connection. The more we understand the subtleties of language, the more effectively we can express ourselves, navigate social situations, and build meaningful relationships. It's like we're unlocking a hidden superpower that's been within us all along. Exactly. And like any superpower, it takes practice and experimentation to master it. Right. So don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone, try out new phrases, and see what resonates with you. And remember, even small shifts in your language can create a ripple effect of positivity and understanding. Absolutely. So go out there, embrace the power of everyday English, and let your words create a more vibrant and connected world. Beautifully said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of everyday English. Until next time. It's really amazing how just like changing a word or two can change the whole you know, vibe of a conversation. It is. It's like those little tweaks can have a huge impact. So much power in just like a few little words. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes it's not even about the words themselves. It's about the intention behind them. Right. Like if you're saying something, but you don't really mean it. People can tell. Yeah, they can totally tell. It's like you're not being authentic. And that can actually make things worse. It can, it can damage relationships. It can create misunderstandings. So it's important to be mindful of our words. Definitely. And to make sure that they align with our intentions. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive into the nuances of everyday English, yeah. what's one final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with? Mm, that's a good question. It is a good question. I think I'd encourage everyone to view language not just as a means of communication, but as a tool for personal growth and connection. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you know, the more we understand the subtleties of language, the more effectively we can express ourselves and navigate social situations and build meaningful relationships. So it's not just about getting our point across. It's about so much more than that. It's about connecting with other human beings. Exactly. And creating a more positive and understanding world. And I think that's a really beautiful message to end on. I think so too. 
Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of everyday English. It was my pleasure. Until next time. See ya.